What's up, everyone? Welcome into another edition of our NBA DFS DraftKings Picks videos, this time for Friday, October 29th. First off, shout out to my brother. Happy birthday. It is indeed his birthday. Um, but the last time that I was on video was for the Wednesday podcast. I asked you, how many points will Ja Morant score? It seems these questions are just absolutely completely taking out uh, any player that I ask. He ended up scoring 17 points. The closest one was 19 points. That was a guess. But again, price is right. Everyone loses. Um, not that there's anything to win here, but uh, everyone loses and we can jump into another one here. Just arbitrarily pick a another player. Let's go with Jimmy Butler. How many points will Jimmy Butler score tonight? Comment below. Let me know what you're thinking for everyone that is wondering. He has scored 21, 19, 36, and 17. So generally sits in the 17 to 21 range. But as always, you can guess literally anything you want. Just comment it below. On top of that, if you enjoy this video, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to the channel. You can turn on the notifications if you want to make sure you don't miss any of our videos. And then any questions or comments you have also drop those below. I will be in throughout the day responding to everything that I see. Uh, but for the main question of this podcast, how many points will Jimmy Butler score tonight? So far, we have gone, or everyone that has commented has gone over both times. The first one was on Julius Randle, the second one, John Morant. No one has even gone under. Again, I know we're playing the Price is Right game here, but please don't just drop one point. You will at least win. That's fair. Um, but it will not be impressive as if you actually guess relatively close to his number. It is a Friday slate, which is generally larger. There are only seven games after we're coming off six last night, so it's not necessarily a massive slate. There is a ridiculous amount of injury news. I will uh, try to go over uh, essentially most stuff that uh, is meaningful at this point. And, you know, I'm going to skip over guys like Pascal Siakam, who's not really going to return for at least a few more games. I'll try to keep it to guys that are essentially questionable, doubtful, out for tonight. Uh, and they do have uh, at least a chance to return soon. So it's not kind of like the guys that, you know, you know, you absolutely know at this point aren't going to play. First, we have uh, Karis Levert is questionable for Indiana in the same, I, I guess the same game, obviously, also for the Pacers. Uh, Malcolm Brogdon has already been ruled out, which doesn't bode well for him playing on Saturday. Terry Rozier is questionable, while P.J. Washington is doubtful uh, for the Charlotte Hornets against Miami. Josh Hart is now up to questionable. Garrett Temple is doubtful for New Orleans. Porzingis missed last night. They really made it seem like he had a shot to play in that game, and then you know he was ruled out well before tip, so... Uh, I'm not honestly sure. I, I would put uh, Porzingis as questionable tonight without you know much lean one way or the other. If I had to guess, I'd say he probably plays, but uh, realistically, we just don't know at this point. So uh, Porzingis, questionable, I guess we should say for now. Nikola Jokic, also questionable. Um, it feels like he's in a spot where he's going to play as well, but uh, Denver could play it cautious with him just to make sure that he doesn't get hurt worse. At the moment, he's questionable. Marcus Morris has been ruled out. Norman Powell is questionable again. Uh, and then, obviously, you have the LeBron James news. He is questionable, and it looks like Anthony Davis is going to play in this game. So if you haven't watched our stuff before, uh, I'll break down position by position. I don't want to give a ridiculous amount of plays. I'll kind of go in like pricing tiers and outline more or less my favorite in that tier. Uh, I will not outline every good play for tonight. There's seven games, way too many good plays. Um, so if there is someone that you either, one, have a question on, or two, just want to let everyone know that you like them, drop that in the comments below. I will respond with my honest opinion of them as well. And you can always get our free content at dfskarma.com or our core plays. Uh, it's an entire package. You get projections. You get our core plays. You get premium articles, premium Discord. All of that can be found at dfskarma.com slash pricing, which you see on the new display that we're using. On top of that, if you just want to go in the description, you can essentially find anything that you could need uh, in that as well with the links there. So starting at point guard tonight, 
It really pains me to say that Damian Lillard sticks out so much with the Clippers obviously struggling against point guards. They just played the other night. Uh, Damian Lillard scored 18.25 fantasy points. Uh, That's a real line. The Blazers got absolutely destroyed by the Clippers. Lillard still played 28 minutes and only scored 18, which I feel like that could keep his ownership down a bit more than it should, especially with someone like Luka, who, you know, obviously is playing well, gets a solid matchup against Denver, and people just love uh, playing him, even if they have to pay up for him, or you have James Harden under 10K, so... A lot of different ways you can go, but Damian Lillard is really the guy that sticks out. I really liked him in their first game. Obviously, he shot 0 of 8. You know How many times is Damian Lillard going to shoot that bad on the court, especially in a good matchup? It's just not overly likely. So I do think that going back to Damian Lillard is extremely reasonable. As you drop down more, um, CJ McCollum also sticks out. I wanted to talk a minute about Karis LeVert because a lot of people could be interested in playing him with Malcolm Brogdon out, assuming he returns, but I just want to mention, please be careful with a minutes limit. I believe it was you know lower back surgery that has Karis LeVert missing early uh, this season, so that's not really something to mess around with. They're probably going to bring him back slow. So I wouldn't expect him to get, you know, the 30 plus minutes, even with Brogdon out. Um, So Levert is not really on my radar. If news comes out that he can play, you know, a full game or anything, I think that he'll uh, be added. But CJ McCollum in the plus matchup against uh, the Clippers is another good play at the top of, I guess not at the top, um, but, you know, a, a higher priced option at point guard. As you continue to move down, you know, there are a few options that I do think make sense. Devontae Graham is one that sticks out as too cheap. He scored 30-plus in four of his five. He's flashed 40-plus um, upside. He has the ability to score. He can add rebounds, assists, and steals on, on any given night, and he gets a solid matchup against the Sacramento Kings. Not to mention, um, sample size is super small. It's only five games. Only two of them have been at home. But he's looked really, really good at home, significantly better at home than on the road. So at only 6,000, he kind of feels like a relatively easy play um, that you can plug into cash games or tournaments. Right below him, uh, a very solid pivot is uh, Eric Bledsoe. He was he played big minutes, 30 and 33, in the Clippers' first two games. Uh, then they blew out Portland, and he only played 22. He wasn't needed. And then they got blown out, essentially, by Cleveland, and he played 27. I would expect him to get back up to the 30, and I do like the matchup against Portland. So at 5,700, I think it makes sense. My big concern with that is I need to figure out what I'm doing with TJ McConnell. If Karis LeVert is also out, McConnell probably comes close to a lock with Brogdon out. He hasn't played more than 24 minutes in any game this season, but you know he's been very good kind of throughout his career, especially in recent years, on a per minute basis. And if McConnell is going to play 30 plus minutes at 5,500, it's you know more or less a very easy plug and play. So I would have no issues whatsoever uh, using him. As you drop down more, Jalen Brunson has looked really good. If Porzingis is out again, he could see a little bit larger of a role. Um, Regardless of Porzingis, I think for under 5,000, Jalen Brunson at least makes sense in tournaments, and then you kind of have to determine what you want to do with him in cash. Right below him, Patty Mills is playing a relatively large role for Brooklyn and comes with scoring upside. So he's also a very solid option, and he's only 4,400. And then I guess it just almost solely depends, uh, at least in my opinion, on uh, Norman Powell. If he's out, uh, Anthony Simons does become a very solid option. He scored 30 uh, against Memphis the other night, and that was in 28 minutes. I don't necessarily expect him to get that many minutes, um, but he should get enough to uh, you know, kind of at least be around his value for under 4,000. Moving to shooting guard, uh, anyone that I named at point guard that is also shooting guard eligible, I feel like you can play here. I don't necessarily feel the need to go over guys again like CJ McCollum. You know, we already know that it's a really good play. Uh, There are some guys here that I'll probably talk about that are point guard eligible that just make more sense at shooting guard because of the different options at each position. 
One that kind of sticks out is uh, Nikhil Alexander-Walker. He's been safe. He's coming off a bad game against Atlanta, uh, but that doesn't really bother me. I'm more concerned with his pure upside for his price tag. He just generally doesn't add that many peripherals. He can grab some rebounds and get a few assists, but not really enough to make a huge splash at almost 7,000. Um, I, I do think if his shot's falling extremely well, which it could against Sacramento, he makes a lot of sense. But that's more or less, um, you know, more or less just a strict GPP play where he has the ability to sit right around value. Uh, but his upside, if his shot is falling, is, is significantly higher. And obviously, you know, he comes with quite a bit of downside coming off a 16 fantasy point performance. Down a little bit farther... You have Will Barton, who has performed very well earlier this season. He's you know handling the ball quite a bit. Um, if Jokic is out, I think Will Barton kind of scoots up the board a little bit more. I think he's a really solid option for sub-6,000. The matchup against Dallas is one that I like. I'm not really going to shy away from that or anything. I don't know at the moment what to make of Chris uh, Duarte. I think that he's going to be reasonable as long as Karis Levert is also out. He could do, I guess he probably won't do that much more ball handling, but he could become a bigger part of the offense with Malcolm Brogdon also out. If Levert's in, I feel like Duarte is kind of the guy that is going to lose some of his steam, some of his minutes. So I probably pass at that point. Um, but it's just something to monitor, and I and I did want to mention him. Malik Monk is someone that's reliant on LeBron James. If James is out, Monk should play 30-plus minutes again. Obviously, he comes with a lot of scoring upside, and he's only 4,000 against the Cleveland Cavaliers. So I think that Monk is a very good option, assuming James is out at this point. Um, obviously, we're not just going to assume that he's out, but I'm saying uh, if LeBron James is in. I'll, I will completely get off of Malik Monk. And then I guess I guess it makes sense to at least consider Terrence Mann. His minutes the last three games, which two were blowouts, so those are questionable, but it was a relatively close game against Memphis, and he only played 26 minutes in that. Uh, Mann does come with a ton of upside. He needs his shot to be falling because he doesn't look for it all that much. Um, but... He has the ability to contribute in each of the five categories at some level. Blocks not as high as the other four categories, but at 4,600, it's tough to at least not consider the pure upside of Terrence Mann, especially in a matchup against Portland. At small forward, at the top, you're obviously choosing most likely between uh, Kevin Durant and Paul George. George, after just a ridiculous start to the season, has struggled quite a bit in his last two one of them was against portland obviously and then the other one was against cleveland the big thing is in those two games uh, his steals have kept his floor from you know completely bottoming out he has 12 steals in those two games so even though he's shooting poorly from the field uh, the upsides at least there as well again i made a bet on paul george in the last time he played portland um I'll take a shot on him once again. I prefer him to Kevin Durant. If I'm spending all the way up to the top, Paul George is probably my guy. I do think that both of them are solid options. I have no problems if you want to use LeBron James against his former team as well. But Paul George is the guy that sticks out the most to me up there. As we mentioned earlier, you know, you're making the prediction on Jimmy Butler in the comments how many points, real life points, not fantasy points, he'll be scoring. I think that he's a very good option. He's dropped 50-plus in his last two. Gets a solid matchup against Charlotte, who you're not really worried about guarding small forwards that well. So I do like Jimmy Butler. I would feel weird if we at least didn't mention Harrison Barnes or Miles Bridges for their price tags. Uh, they both have been playing absurdly well early this season. It's actually kind of crazy how well uh, both of them have played. I don't love the matchup necessarily for either of them. I do think that you can use either of them, uh, specifically in tournaments. You're not going to go that way in cash, but in tournaments, both do make sense. And, uh, you know, it just feels like we should at least be mentioning just how ridiculous they've been. Another guy that has taken a step forward recently, 
I loved him uh, early in the season. It didn't work out in the first two games. The last three, it has worked out. His price is on the rise, but still way too cheap, is OG Anunoby. As long as Pascal Siakam's out, he makes sense. He scored 45-plus in two consecutive. He's finally shooting significantly better. Um, even though his shot isn't falling at a ridiculous rate, it's still under 50%, so he hasn't really had that absurd game outside of against Dallas he shot 60% from the field but he didn't take uh, you know as many shots that was his I guess that was the game with his fewest amount of shot attempts it was at 15 but he can contribute in multiple ways and I do think that he's one of the better uh, GPP options at least on the slate as you go down more, we have kind of the usual guys that I tend to talk about um, Franz Wagner just continues to make sense he's really safe he's under 5,000 so I have no issues with playing someone like that and then if you want to get all the way down at the bottom of this position assuming um, Norman Powell's out and Asir Little keeps drawing the starts he's played 27 minutes or more in three consecutive and he's only 4,100 so uh, if Norman Powell's out Nasir Little is the guy that you're most likely going to um, consider and then down at 3600 it's an odd pricing, uh, but Cody Martin comes with plenty of upside. I think I've actually played him once this season, and it was against Boston when he scored 8.75. Uh, outside of that, 20-plus in all of them, 30-plus upside. At 3600 it's hard to argue with those types of results. So I do think that you can uh, consider him on this slate as well. At power forward, you kind of have the usual suspects. If LeBron's out, we can use Anthony Davis, who's coming off a relatively bad game, um, specifically for playing without LeBron. Uh, Domantas Sabonis makes sense against Brooklyn. I don't see anyone on their team really stopping him. He's also at 9,400. And then you kind of have a lot of the guys that we talked about. At 6,800, Evan Mobley is an interesting tournament option. I don't think he's safe enough for cash, but he has the ability to contribute in each of the five categories. He has double-double upside, and he has a ton of block and steal potential. So I do think that anytime he's under 7,000, um, it's at least someone that you can consider in tournaments, even if he's not the highest guy on your board. You know, Maybe he's the final piece that you're putting in, but I do think that he's a relatively reasonable option. Then you have a lot of the same guys uh, that you had at small forward here at power forward. There's not really too many uh, that stick out for cheap. Uh, I probably want to spend up a bit here. You have, you know, obviously uh, Nasir Little. Outside of that, if Porzingis is out, you have um, Maxi Kleber. I have no problems with that. Um, you also have uh, Dorian Finney-Smith, who probably sees a little bit of an uptick as well, even though you know he's going to get the minutes anyway. He could see a few extra shots, but Kleber last night has uh, coming off a very big game without uh, Porzingis, so if that happens again, Kleber probably ends up being really popular for such a cheap price tag, but you know, there's inherent risk with a player like Maxi Kleber. But moving to center, if Jokic is playing... He's 100% viable. The matchup against Dallas is great. I have no issues with that whatsoever. You have Jonas Valanciunas is finally priced up, but he's just playing at an extremely high level. He gets a great matchup against the Kings. Um, I just feel like Jonas Valanciunas comes with pretty much unmatched upside for anyone at his price or below. And... People really aren't going to pay 8500 I don't think, anyway, for Jonas Valanciunas, which is, you know, kind of puts you in an even better spot. The guy that I have consistently played, Mo Bamba, always in play. He's a double-double threat. He can add steals, blocks on any given slate, um, a few assists as well. So at 6600 I also like him, but I probably prefer Evan Mobley uh, just for the particular matchup. If you want pure upside, you know, Jarrett Allen, I have no problems. Or Sean Holmes, I have no problems. Uh, but those two aren't necessarily my favorite options. Uh, I think they're both fine. I think you can play someone like Pre uh, Precious Chuiwa. I think he's a very solid option for 5,300, but he does come with plenty of risk because 
I don't necessarily expect him to be able to stop Mo Bamba, so they could pull him to get a bigger body in there. Uh, but, you know, in tournaments, you kind of take risks like that, and, you know, you want the pure upside of it. So I do think that he's a viable option. Uh, I just think that there's quite a bit of risk involved with that as well. That about does it uh, for who I'm looking at playing. Don't forget, uh, this comes out the night before, so a lot of news is going to change. Uh, you should be getting into our Discord where we go over stuff 24-7. Chatdfs.com is, is where you can get in that, or just click the link uh, in the description for our chat room. DFSKarma.com is where you can find all of our free stuff, uh, our core plays, um, the packages you can buy, all that good stuff. Again, if you enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up. Comment how many points you believe Jimmy Butler is going to score or any questions or comments that you have regardless. And subscribe to the channel. You can also turn on the notifications if you want to make sure that you don't miss any of our podcasts. Uh, but thank you for watching and good luck tonight.